Alright guys, welcome back to Let's Play XCOM UFO Defense. Uh, this is our first terror mission of the month. And the month's almost over and we're probably going to get a huge ass raise. Get a ton of money. Um, I already saved it. And we have a rocket tank. And let's get some smoke grenades prepped. I think we're at the back of the map so we don't have to worry about people shooting in. Uh, another thing I do in terror missions, if you're not in such a position that you are sure aliens aren't going to be here. So like say if there was like buildings like right over here and the map extended is actually drop a smoke grenade like right up in here in your Sky Ranger so they can't actually see into it. It's pretty useful. Another thing is apparently you're supposed to be able to see out the back of your Sky Ranger like this. At the very least it reveals terrain. Uh, I don't recall ever seeing an alien doing that though. Is this primed? Prime. Uh, honestly, I don't think you're able to throw out of your Sky Ranger from back here, because they actually have an arc to grenades in this game. Um, I'm going to actually give the aliens the first turn to deplete some of their time units, because I'll actually explain how reaction fire works real quick. Um, let's take Alexander here. Uh, his reactions are 58, which is one of the reasons he's at the front of the ship. That's pretty high, actually. And you're, that's, so you kind of have a 58% chance of reacting uh, when they see you. The problem is, is it's based off of your time units that you have left. So, um, I'm not, actually I'll look it up later, I don't remember the exact formula for it, but uh, it's a form, it's a equation based on your remaining time units and your reaction fire. It might just be if you have higher reaction. Uh, or a multiplication such that if you had say 100 time units and 50 reaction and an alien had 200 time units and 50 reaction uh, if you multiply those together if the alien had like came below a certain threshold like if you were had full time units and he dropped under 100 and you had the same reaction uh, you would be able to shoot at him when you saw him something like that but uh, I'm actually going to give it First turn and get every civilian on the map killed. And this I'm not so much worried about points and stuff, so later guy. Oh, and it's not floaters, sadly enough. So you'll get to see the dreaded cyber disc. And this to give my tank a little bit of cover. I think it landed on the bridge there. Good old Barbara and Manfred. And actually I got a few uh, few viewers who wanted to uh, get themselves in the game, so after this mission, I kind of was in the middle of the mission, uh, but afterwards I will uh, throw them on the Space Ranger and kill some guys. We are losing a lot of civilians. Wow. And this is the corner of the map, actually, which is pretty good, so that I can kind of go down and to the right and fan out without worrying about getting attacked from behind. I'm actually going to drop another rocket here somewhere. Got you. It takes a pretty accurate, even, with her low chance to hit snapshots. We see another alien. Way the F over there. So let's grab go Mr. Alexander. Right here. Have him kneel. And um what's that math? Twenty thirty-three so we can do both, so I'm gonna do an auto shot first. They're already killing all the civilians in this map, so I'm not really worried about hitting them. Uh, if you hit, fair enough. If you hit a civilian and kill them, you lose like a hundred points, and if the aliens do, you lose like fifty points. So it's not usually a good idea to fire blindly on a terror mission. Of 
course, it doesn't make a distinction if your own troops kill each other, I don't think. You just lose the operative. Another trick that people do with, like, throwaway guys is to prime this grenade and run around with it. Because if you get sh and just run him forward as fast as you can, because if you get shot, he'll drop the grenade and it'll blow up. Maybe prime it to one or two and hope the aliens move forward after killing him or run him into a building. Oh, they're using Psy already. This is going to suck. Oh, crap. Oh, shoot. That's what makes sectoids hard. And here's our cyber disk. Um, uh, one of the interesting things about larger units in this game is because of the angle of fire, depending on, like if I shot him here, my shots would be less accurate. But if I shoot him back here, there's a chance that he would randomly hit these three spots. So I'm going to shoot right there shoot my own tank and do a crap ton of damage to my own tank. That's awesome. Um, and one thing about Cyberdiscs is they're, especially on Superhuman, they are essentially immune to conventional weapons. You have to kill with lasers or explosives. So if you do find this and they blow up when you shoot them. <laughs> So if you do find yourself in a terror mission against Cyberdiscs and you do not have any kind of heavy explosive or laser weapon, you should probably just abort the mission and take the loss. If you go to a terror mission and um, immediately leave, uh, you, all you get negative points for is the dead civilians, which is like 300 to 400, depending on how many how many spawned. Um, that's far better than if you ignored it. If you ignore a terror site, you lose a thousand points. So we'll always at least drop a Sky Ranger there. Maybe if you see aliens right in front of it, kill a few. Um, oop. I don't think I have time units on... Yeah, I do. No, I don't have enough. I think he has vision on those guys. Um, I get a snapshot from here. Get lucky, maybe. Get lucky. Hit him, but it didn't kill him. Right now would be a good time to have the mind probe to see where the leader. It's a leader or commander is when sectoids start getting psionic abilities. And if anybody's ever played this before, they know about the good old Ethereals, which every single one, I believe, has psionic abilities, and they suck really, really bad to fight. Because psionics make the game super hard, and at the same token, super easy. Because once you have it on a couple of troops, the game's auto-win, more or less. So I actually don't use mass psionics at all. In fact, um, I changed how I use psionics with XCOM Utility a bit. Um, I, in order to find out your psionic potential, because you actually don't see it yet, I think it's right here. Uh, you have two psionic stats that fit in here. Uh, you actually have to spend a whole month training in a Psylab once you learn about psionics. Which I think is kind of dumb, that you have to spend one whole month screening your guys. So I have it set to automatically screen my troops and show me their psi stats, but only after I've learned about psionics. Which I think is fair, because you should be able to screen your troops to know at least about how strong they are. Um, I missed him. <laughs> Oops. Alright, let's try that again. Uh, and he totally missed everything on the map. Good job. Fucking tank. So bad at this game. 
Alright, let's see if my guy shoots up his own tank some more. Right, this is a horrible start for a terror mission. They killed every civilian already. I've already got fucking psionic commanders trying to kill me. The worst thing that can happen to is that, um, Sai, he's only panicked my troops so far. Uh, they actually can mind control your troops, which is kind of awful. Sweet! That's the main thing you want to learn psionics for, is to find out who can, um, not who has a decent size strength so they don't get mind control every mission. Um, and a good tactic is to, eventually we're going to get personal armor because we are researching alien alloys currently. Um, I'm going to prime this and go on a suicide death mission. No, I'm just going to open this door, this gate here. I hate grenades sometimes. There it goes. Uh oh. I'm out of TUs. Oops. Um, what was I saying? Armor. Uh, after you get personal armor, you can, uh, you can get power armor and, um, flying armor. They both have similar armor values. Uh, but one thing about them is they're immune to certain weapons because certain, like, pistols and I think maybe rifles, but I know pistols for sure, are quite literally unable to do any damage to you. So what you can do is give, if you don't want to just immediately sack your low uh, psi strength units, you can uh, give, make sure all your good troops have power armor and stuff, and you can uh, give the crappy troops pistols and let them scout, and I think even regular grenades uh, they're immune to. You can give them those and uh, run around and scout for your guys. And without fearing, either I killed the commander or he was busy. Uh, the aliens also panic too. Uh, so if you're, even especially on superhuman, because there's so damn many of them, if you start killing all their guys, they start freaking out. Especially I think floaters or scaredy cats. this guy at. I could click the button. Hm. Let's see where he sees. Oh. Oh, he's on the second level. I never would have found him. <laughs> Let's see if he has a uh, line of sight on this guy. I don't think he does. There he goes. That's the one that annoying about floaters and s cyber discs is that they float around on... He's so dead. They float around on the second level and are sometimes hard to see without making sure you click the little button to aim at them. This rocket up here. Rockets do do a decent amount of damage sometimes, because those things have a ridiculous amount of armor. So when it comes to armor, you're never guaranteed to do a lot of damage. I think I have to move this person forward a little bit. And it takes time units to fire reaction shots, so you should be l lower on time units. So you shouldn't have to worry as much about getting shot at, even though her reactions are a little low. Yes. Sorry, Nikolai. You look like a girl. Now. Okay, you're awful. So I'm going to try to save his life and we'll retreat a little bit. And see, one of the problems being right here is that Sky Ranger can actually block block my line of sight. Let's see. Yep. Let's see him. But I don't think I can hit him. This side is a very pain in the butt to kill. Yeah. No, my girls can't shoot, apparently. Go out and go! Hits and kills it. And here's an interesting thing. One of the, it's hard to collect Cyberdisc corpses, but there he is. Um, a, kind of a bug with the game is their self-destruct mechanism um, takes place where they were when they died, not where they body fell to. So if you kill them in the air, 
uh, their corpse will fall and the explosion will happen on the level that they were originally at. Which is silly, but it's just how it is. And I'm pretty sure there was a alien over here. I saw him. I see him. I see him. Uh, Steven hasn't got a shot yet. He should be able to see from here. Give me a couple of auto shots. Wait, 20. 42. That's enough to kneel. Of course, my tank's not in the way. He's in the way enough to get shot. I'm surprised I didn't kill my tank. That would have been pretty funny. Killed it with a rifle. I don't think my rifles can actually harm the tank. Uh, another thing that does happen is your armor gets can get hurt if you get hit. So you might start off with a huge amount of armor, and if you get hit by a heavy plasma, lose some armor, and then plasma rifles might then be able to harm you easier, and so on.